I guess you're. if you go to the board, you're just going to get a blister and kill somebody. Probably. And then suddenly the market is flooded with them and there's a million people selling them. And But if you're dealing with like a, you know, a, a player that really wants or needs a card that you're, you know, that they've picked out of your trade binder. Mike's wearing cologne. Am I? Something. And so if he plays Heliod on three and, and wants to combo off the next. Hey everyone, Andy here with another episode of Attacking the Meta. I think this is episode 11. I could be wrong. Might be 10. Might be 9. Might be 15. I did so well for those two weeks in a row. Anyway, we're back from our canoe trip, and we're playing some magic. Um, we're doing interesting stuff today. Essentially, we're calling and playing what I call Happy Celebration. Because essentially, we are comboing with Plain White Celebration and Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After is an enchantment that says, on your upkeep, you win the game. If you have five colors among permanents you control, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, and there's six or more card types among permanents you control slash in your graveyard, and your life total has to be uh, higher than your starting life total. And when it comes to the battlefield, you gain five life, so that's pretty good. Plain White Celebration is a sorcery for seven mana that says choose four. And you can choose the same one more than once. You create a 2-2, two -two, that's all colors. So that, that handles that. Also puts a sorcery in your graveyard, of course. Uh, return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. So if you need to just get stuff back, like this actually works that way. Proliferate, we don't choose that one. And you gain four life. So we can create four 2-2s. Two we can create two 2-2s, two -two gain eight life. Like whatever we need to, to win the game, generally. Um, beyond that, we're playing mostly the, the standard Grow Spiral uh, Uro deck into Nyssa. We're only playing three copies of Nyssa. Uh, playing four Teferis. We just want to play all the Planeswalkers. Also playing one Great Henge. Mostly because it's an artifact, and that's just relevant. Um, interesting things. Elder Garganoth. I think this card's amazing, and I think it should see more play. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, two Elspeth Conqueror's Death, pretty normal. Two Night of Autumn. Thought about playing Dream Trawler here, but I think Night of Autumn is just a little bit better at getting uh, at winning against like the aggro matchups. Because we're not going to combo against the aggro, we just kind of outlast them, and that's fine. Um, then, of course, Cultivate. We're playing just as the only sorcery in our deck besides Plain Wide Celebration. Um, I guess as long as we have Plain Wide Celebration, it'll. And if we're planning on comboing with it, because it's the only way we get five colors. We're always going to get that into the battlefield, or into the graveyard, so we don't really have to worry about the playing Cultivate to get that, so Cultivate could be a cut, but Cultivate also is a ramp spell, and of course Grow Spiral and um, are both ramp spells as well. But, I mean, we have to get to we have to get to get 7 mana, so we're going to try it. Cultivate might see a cut for, for something else, maybe a couple more Night of Autumns, maybe a Dream Trawler or two, something like that, but anyway... If you're new to this series, what we do is we go into uh, ranked best of ones and we play five matches and we see how it goes. Also, I forgot to play music, so let's get that started right now. Because we do that. Turn it down to a reasonable level. And we'll go into game number one. So essentially what we try to do in this series is we try to play decks that are not meta. Um, yes, I realize my color is way off. I don't really care to fix it, though. Um, yeah, we try to play very not-meta decks. And the goal of that is just to kind of have fun and, and not need to play the same decks as everyone else all the time. There's a combo piece. Nice. But we want to play decks that are actually good in the meta. Now, um, of course, with, like, this matchup, or not this matchup, but this deck specifically... Having things, having access to things like Uro, uh, Grow Spiral, kind of puts us just competitive anyway. And then, really, what we're doing is instead of playing things like, um, what was this? It's a ramp spell. Instead of playing things like Ugin as the top end, we're just going for the, the combo one instead. Which, we'll see how it goes. I think. I think it allows us just to kind of steal some games that we otherwise wouldn't. But, you know, we'll, we'll really see. Who knows? Let's 
sick. You're gonna hit me with three. That was a great turn for me. Neasy probably has removal, but we'll bait it out anyway. Because this creature is sick. Heavily Ever are just gaining us both five life. Like, yeah, their opponent gets it too, but that don't matter. What matters is we're gaining life against aggro decks. That's pretty sweet sometimes, actually. So right here, let's go ahead and cultivate. Um, we'll grab these two. We'll make this guy big so we can block. Good thing about Cultivate 2 with Uro is it does go in the graveyard. So, it does kind of... Instead of being like a creature that just stays on the battlefield or an enchantment or something, you get a happily ever after. Congrats. But it's nice because it actually just kind of sticks. The good thing about playing this matchup is he can't actually deal with Happily Ever After. He cannot remove that. So I, I don't have to worry about losing out to the combo most, most of the time anyway. Now, obviously, he can kill my tutus that are every color, so like it doesn't actually win. Not enough to play Uro yet. Let's draw a card. Cool. This is where it's gonna get started to get scary because him just flaming uh, gray merchants is, yeah, like that is gonna hurt. Take eight from that. Oh god! Oh, I actually just die. Drew the Azvito. I'm dead no matter what because of Vito. And of course, the damage going through anyway. But we'll block what we can kill. And we'll take a game loss on game number one, unfortunately. Go to game number two. Was this the guy we just played? Might have been. We're mulligan this. This is awful. We'll put one happily ever after on bottom. We have Gross Spiral. And a Scry to start us off with. That's awful. Does he play? No. Okay, so this is a different guy. Or at least he's playing a different deck. Serpent for one! Mono green, probably. Goose. Let's go get a white land. He's gonna swing one at me, but that's that's his entire turn. Now Sue's gonna make it hard for me to get all the stuff I need. Cause it's gonna eat up the yard. Beast? Oh, ooh, that's actually kind of scary because he does have the Serpent as well. Lands? That's a Lands. Now we get, what, an island left? No forest, okay. Look at this guy. He's pretty good. He shouldn't have really any removal. Yeah, like a fight card would be his best removal. Could be a one-sided fight, I guess, but still. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Wellstruck Beast that does damage to Elder Gar Gargaroth. Would be the, his best choice. Okay. Well, he kills happily ever after, which is fine. Yeah, 
put it on bottom. And if I attack into him, I'll get the trigger, but of course, he gets his stuff. You know, I will now. I'm gonna say, because he can double block, but the cool thing. Make beast. Let's have another one. They're not legendary or anything, but still, I can just kind of clear his board. Oh god, he's gonna let it through. Well, here's another one. <coughs> ah, pardon me. Okay, you get a death toucher. Cute. Um, yeah, let's make a beast. Attack with him only. Make a beast. He's gonna block with the scoos. I guess he doesn't want to get the scoos big. One more land, and we might have it, depending on. Uh, Things we have one, two, three, four. Would have instant, instant sorcery in our yard. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it does that. Cool. We have to kill that scoos though, because it it does trigger an upkeep, not on. Uh, no, what did we call it? It doesn't trigger as soon as I do it, it triggers on a peep. So I have creature, land, enchantment, planeswalker. So yeah, I'm two away, it needs to be instant. Um, instant and sorcery. We have sorcery. But if he eats my instant, then I'm done. Oops. I don't know what he's saying oops to. What has he got? Three creatures? Block with three beasts, that's fine. Let's see what he has. He doesn't have any tricks. You can just eat three things. Go up to eight, I still win. So I don't have anything here. And I have to fairy, so he can't play like a giant's growth type effect. Could just eat one of them and leave the rest. Cause the life doesn't matter. Okay. As he goes to six. He still kills two of my beasts. He's at eight. He still kills two of my beasts. It, it didn't matter. He didn't kill the sorcery, so that's good. Now my, uh, my force uh, tap for double, so that's nice. Should be able to plus to fairy and a turn playing white celebration and win. And it is turn. Let's see, plays another scoos. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah.
shouldn't have. Had no reason to plus there. Or no reason to shock, I mean. Of course I'll block with the beast if I have to. Again, he has no pump effects or anything like that, as long as I have to ferry out. Unless he does them main phase. Nothing I can be surprised about anyway. Sick. Get a mammoth. Thumbs up, buddy. You got a mammoth. Got an 8 8 for 6. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Plane-wide celebration! Happily ever after! Or 1-1. One, one. That's a combo. That's a combo. We also have a pack we'll open at the end of this. At least one. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's M21 or not. If it's not M21, then we're probably opening gems. So that'd, that'd be too bad. Eggs! Oh no! I hope he doesn't play eggs. This is fine-ish. Well, let's let's gain some life. Ooh, nice draw. Now we can play this guy next turn. It makes great hand is really cheap too. Some sort of combat trick. Embercleave. You'll still need to sac uh, just discard something to make that indestructible. I think Elspeth conquers death next turn on uh, on Embercleave. Puts him in not a great position. That sets me up to get uh, the other thing back pretty soon, too. If he has another Embercleave, yeah, cool. 
but that's fine. Nope, we need blockers. Winona! here. At least kill something. This is kind of neat. That's actually not neat at all. I was thinking I'd be able to play this, but I can't. That's just green. Oh well. You gain two off it at least. Eek. Still looks a little bit scary though, I will say that. These are all humans though. There's another Ember Cleave, I'm dead. Fuck. Put it on. That's not the right call. He put it on Winota, I was dead. This might still kill me? Yeah, it still kills me. Okay. Damn! I got pobulated. Shit. Shit. <laughs> oh, one, two. Okay. <laughs> that was the problem. Like him having double double ember cleave. It's hard to beat. When he has one card left in hand, I mean, it's ember cleave. Eek. His hand's a little slow, but we'll keep it. That helps. We have no ramp. Oh, eek. Not really what we want to see there. Okay. So no stomp. Hmm. Weird. I feel like that's not enough. Give me my planes. played this guy, but that's alright. Let's see what he does here. Luckily with the fairy, you can never get value out of um, Embercleave, like flashing it in. Yeah, 
has to pay full price for an Embercleave. I mean, now, now he doesn't, but he did before. Well, now we have a 6-6 six, six against 3 life every time it attacks and blocks, and it has Vigilance. Well, that hurts a lot. That does seven. I think I'll take it because I can swing back. If you didn't cleave I'm just dead as hell. That's not good either. There's gonna be number cleave coming. Not how that deck's supposed to win. Ugh. All right, sick. We'll go into I don't know what this is. Uh, game number five. Currently two two. So we can pick up a win here. <laughs> Playing my celebration game twelve. This guy was scoop. This hand's okay, especially if we get. The white source for Night of Autumn, especially. <sighs> okay, we'll get more red. Mm, yeah, we'll keep the land just because of the Ergo. But we'll play Field Passage turn two. Robber the Rich. Okay, well, you get a land. Swing at me. Grow Spiral. Oh, now I'll just play that in tap. Uro! He can cast for three! That goes in my graveyard, at least. Doesn't do a lot for him, just draws him a card. I'm actually really happy with that. Just gonna spend three mana to draw a card. Well, that puts another land into play, that's a little annoying. 
for life. trade. What do you get from me? Oh god, that guy's scary. He has five mana to play him. Eek. Well, let's draw some cards. turn you attack to the row. Okay, so since that's dead, he can't actually play it anyway. Make sure I can flashback Earl next turn. I really don't have enough basics actually playing Cultivate. That's alright. Torbrand. Torbrand, brand, brand, brand. Oh, this guy's gonna be huge now. He's gonna hit me for seven. Cute. Let me put an extra to land in, then I can play Elspeth Conqueror's Death off awe out of that. Don't play Fable Passage, I have no basics left. Cleave's still a hell of a drug, but Earl's pretty good, too. I don't like that he has four cards in his hand. Essentially five, because of this guy. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I got it pretty much. Cleave goes up to five. So it'll be a trade. Gets new damage for me though. Oh, that's actually really cute. I have to gain life when that comes back in. I just gained 10 off that against Mono Red. That seems pretty good. 13 when you count Uro the turn before. And we got rid of Ember Cleave there. That was a good turn. I refilled his hand, but that's alright. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, I have the exact mana except Fabled Passage. You can't hit me a basic. I get two draws. Don't 
matter what I give it. That's neat. Can you kill both my tutus? Kill one of them. I'm blocking with it. Nope. I will win. Oh, I didn't have I didn't have the stuff. Well that's fine. Has a checklist. Sure, I have to ferry. I mean, six. Read to fairy again. Apparently just being at 41 will win against this deck. Well, cool. That is happily ever after. Uh, we're going to finish 3-2. Decent showing. If I had to change anything, I'd probably change Cultivate. Probably put another instant in its place, or um, maybe like a brazen borrower in its place, like a couple brazen borrows anyway, because half a brazen borrower is an instant, so if it ever gets into their graveyard, that counts there. Um, I don't know. Contain it, priest. Let's see what our last one is. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. I, I put these out every Monday. Um, Otherwise, every Thursday, you have the actual podcast uh, with Mike Cooley and Brad O'Brien. They, they come out every Thursday night. Also on this channel, but ever, also everywhere uh, podcasts can be found. Subscribe. Take a look at them. And uh, other than that, I'm just extra content.